Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today, we have got episode number 46 for you all, and it's another day we're coming off the gridiron to start today's episode because this weekend is the conference championships. Big, big weekend. Super Bowl matchup is going to be decided this weekend. We're going to find out if for the third year in a row, if that little Super Bowl color conspiracy theory <laughs> is coming true. It might. It might be. We might. We might. Hey, I don't know. They're both one seed. I don't feel like that can be that big of a conspiracy theory if they make That's, it. I mean, but it's like, what are the chances, though? Three years in a row? Like, get, get, like you know, I wouldn't be mad at it. Trust me. I would, wouldn't be mad at it. This is what I'm going to say. If it would have been, like, uh, like, green and... I don't know, green and like red, and they were like, Yeah, it was it's the Packers and the Texans going to the Super Bowl. And that would that have been crazy. Then I would have been, like, <laughs> been all in on the conspiracy theory. Oh, yeah, facts. Come on, it's two one seeds. Like yeah. I don't know. I'm betting the house on whatever colors next year. <laughs> I tell right, you that right, much. right. Uh, but we don't know. We gonna have to see any given Sunday. And these are two, I think, going to be very, very good conference championship games. So before we get into all of the previews for both of those games you're going to get the housekeeping out of the way if you're watching this on youtube be sure to like comment subscribe hit the notification bell uh get notified for all of our shorts and of our uh you know short form content head over to the audio platforms go ahead and leave a five-star review pre-download the show and follow us on the socials there at the bottom of the screen at off the glass pod on instagram and at off the glass podcast on tiktok I have a little bit of a, a new vibe coming shortly. Going to be trying to get into playback for those of y'all that know what that is. Going to be live streaming some NBA games here in the next couple of weeks. We'll get that set up and get the info out to y'all when we get that going. So you know, let me come join the stream. Come join the live. Come watch some ball with us. Um, it's going to be a good time for sure. With that, how are we doing today, Dame? How are we feeling? I'm doing good, man. Excited, ready for some foosball, baby. Let's go. I'm excited. Getting close to that Super Bowl, but uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think there's gonna be some really good games this weekend. Let's go ahead and get right into it. We are uh, we about halfway through the week removed, so I, I know a lot of y'all probably y'all watch the games. Y'all probably have gotten a ton of ton of recaps on what happened in the divisional round. We're not gonna spend a bunch of time diving into that. We'll go through it quickly. Obviously, Chiefs Bills. Chiefs first time ever. Mahomes goes on the road, gets himself a playoff win. You want to get mad at Tyler Bass for missing a field goal? I think the Bills had a lot more other opportunities to win the game than just that. Facts. Um, so it's tough. Buffalo, I, 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 I feel, I feel for Buffalo fans. I don't know if y'all listening or watching have ever seen the thirty for thirty, the four falls of Buffalo. If you haven't, gist of it is, bro, the Buffalo Bills made four Super Bowls in the nineties and back to back to back to back years. Four in a row and lost every single one. It's, it's, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I'm not a fan of jumping off your team, I'm not a fan of bandwagons, bro. I'll tell you one thing right now Steelers will go to four Super Bowls in a row and lose all all of them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be dare caught wearing yellow or black, bro. I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. but yeah, to go from that to a stretch in time where the bills. No, nah, it's not even a stretch. Really, two decades <laughs> to mm. where your little brother to Tom Brady in the AFC East, and finally he leaves. He goes to the whole other conference, and now you're going up against year in and year out in the playoffs, arguably the greatest football quarterback talent we've ever seen in Patrick Mahomes. You can't catch a break. You just cannot catch a break if you're a Bills fan. So. My heart goes out to y'all. It's tough, but Mahomes did. Mahomes things multiple times throughout that game. And you got to give credit where it's due. He's got this team in the AFC Championship where people, I feel like, especially if he wins this weekend, that narrative is going to try to get swept under the rug a little bit because the hate for Mahomes is starting to reach that level of Brady where like he's succeeding nice. so much that people are going to just start hating the success. Mm -hmm. But we've done it because it was true. People, the talking heads have done it because it was true. The Chiefs offense was trash, bro. It was. It was garbage. Right. So he's elevating, propelling. Guys are stepping up. 
They're playing power football. Pacheco is running the ball great. Rasheed Rice, like I said, stepped up. MVS had a nice game on Saturday. So, you know, it's, it's, it's something to be said there about what Mahomes is able to do with this core to get them to the AFC championship game. Obviously, on the other side of the ball, you got what's probably going to be the MVP in Lamar Jackson. Um, this Ravens offense is coming. Their defense is playing unbelievably. The second half against the Texans pitched a shutout. The Texans offense only scored three points. They, the only touchdown of the game came on a punt return. Um, mm-hmm. So for the, the Ravens to get here, Lamar accounts for four touchdowns in that game. And now we have the heavyweight fight in Baltimore. Man. You got Lamar with his chance to get to his first Super Bowl going up against Mahomes, who is now in his sixth, right? Six straight I think so, AFC yeah. championship game. Five or six, one of the two. So it's something crazy. He's never not been in there since he became a right. starter. Only second to Tom Brady in consecutive champion conference championship games reached. And Tom Brady has eight. It's Patrick nuts. Mahomes has six. And this is the first six years of him as a starter. <laughs> it's nuts, bro. It's nuts. It's oh, it's insane, bro. And yeah, honestly, the my main thing, my main takeaway from this Chiefs team, bro. All I'm gonna say, look, I, I personally I like the Chiefs. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a second favorite team, but like when my Steelers are not in it, I find myself rooting for the Chiefs a little bit. All I'm gonna say is for the, all the people that hate the Chiefs and hate Mahomes and hate the success that they're having, y'all yeah, better hope that someone else wins this year. Because if it, if not this year, then when, bro? Like, if if they win it this year Literally. after, like you said, the terrible offense, the slow start, um, like the stretch in, in like the second half of the season, second ish half of the season when they were kind of losing some games, to do all that, flip the switch, turn it on, and then win the Super Bowl again. When when are you beating them, bro? This is like the worst, at least offensively. This is like the worst you know, offensive Chiefs team since Patrick Mahomes become a starter. If they do that and still win after the year where they had quote unquote no receivers the year prior and Patrick Holmes was on one leg and still won the Super Bowl. Y'all never beating them, bro. I'm just being honest. Y'all just y'all, y'all never doing it, bro. It's mm-hmm. it's slow. So yeah, yeah. I better yeah, I better hope the Ravens, uh Ravens step up, do their thing. And honestly, I I think they got a really good shot. They got a really good mm-hmm. shot. Let's it's, it's gonna be a great game. Like I said, heavyweight battle. I'm just excited, bro. Whoever wins is gonna deserve it, but I just want to see a really good game. That's all I care about. I agree. I hope I hope it's good playoff weather. I hope it's a little a little chilly. I don't mm-hmm. want no snow, no rain. I want I want it to be. I want it to feel like an NFL playoff game. You want to see the you want to see the breath on the TV, but right. still yeah, able to throw the ball. It's not, it's not right. impeding anything offensively. Right. So let's let's get right into it with this matchup. Right. What are you What are you most looking at in terms of like what? What would be key for either the Chiefs or the Ravens to, to have to happen for them to get to the Super Bowl? Well, honestly, from the Chiefs aspect, you're gonna have to put up points. You're gonna have to put up points on the Ravens defense. Um, you're gonna still be able to run, you're gonna need to be able to run the ball. I feel like I don't know if you could just drop back and just throw the ball all over the yard against the Ravens defense, especially with that pass rush and just with their, you know, their great defense. So I feel like you're gonna have to find a way to like get some sort of running game with Pacheco just to kind of take pressure off. Mm-hmm. Will that happen? I'm not sure. The Ravens defense has been elite mm-hmm. <laughs> all all year, all year long. Was had a few hiccups. Other than that, they have been elite. But again, I mean, if there's anybody that can muster up some sort of offense, it would be Patrick Mahomes. So if they can't get any sort of running game, like I said, if anybody could just put the team on the back, it would be Mahomes. But against this Baltimore defense, it is going to be tough. Like it's going to be the toughest battle yet. So I'm excited to see if they can do that offensively and defensively. I mean, the Chiefs' defense has been good. I mean, they've given up some like big games on, like on the ground, but other than that, they've still been solid. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what they can do as far as slowing down Lamar Jackson because he's pretty much the entire offense for Baltimore. Um, and for Baltimore's side, it's good. Honestly, for me, it's going to be the defense. Can the defense continue to play this great and kind of not shut down Mahomes, but slow them down enough to where, you know, their offense can kind of take over and they can actually win this game. So it's going to be excited. It's going to be, you know, strength on strength. So, mm-hmm. man, something's going to have to give. That's all I know. Like, so, something's going to have to give. Great defense, elite quarterback on both sides because both elite quarterbacks, both good defenses. So something's going to have to give. But I, that's why I think this game, either way, I think it's going to be a close one. I don't think either side is going to blow the other team out. Like, I think this game will come down to, you know, late in the fourth quarter, who executes better. So, yep. I'm excited. I'm glad you brought up uh, the the Chiefs run game because I, I have two 
key matchups on both sides of the ball that I think are, are going to be critical to determining the outcome of the game. And on one side, you have obviously on the Chiefs offense, their running game has been honestly, Pacheco had a very good season. It's been very consistent for them, especially in their, their first two playoff games. Um, that is going to have to go up against, like you said, this very stout Ravens front seven, Michael Pierce, who's having a great season, Patrick Green, Ro- Roquan Smith. Uh, these guys are very, very physical mm-hmm. at the point of attack, are very physical on run fits. It's not going to be easy, and it's not going to be helped by the fact that Joe Tooney sounds like he's not going to be able to play um, one of the best guards in the league uh, there for Kansas City. So his pec injury seems like it's probably going to keep him out of the AFC Championship game. So it's going to be tough for them to try to play some of the smash mouth football that you saw from them, especially during stretches there in that Buffalo game, really like getting downhill with Pacheco um, and letting the run game kind of set them up from there. Um, they hit a lot of big play action shots um, in that Bills game, again, all being set up by the fact they were able to get positive yardage at a good clip there. Um, so that's going to be one of the key things. Can they establish a run game, like you said? And then on the flip side, when Kansas City is on offense, I would imagine that Travis Kelsey is going to see a very healthy dose of Kyle Hamilton. 100%. What is that matchup going to look like? Really, and like if you even factor in their linebacker core, you look at Patrick Queen, you look at Roquan Smith, you look at Kyle Hamilton. Between the three of them, they're going to have a lot of – that's six eyes on 87. Mm-hmm. What are they going to do if they can contain that matchup? Because look, he kind of was sputtering out towards the end of the season. It looked a little wonky, even in the uh, the first playoff game. He had a couple of drops you don't he see had a from big him. Drop. Mm-hmm. Um, he got it going again in the the Bills game. Two touchdowns. One of them was as wide open as it gets in the NFL, especially in the playoffs. Um, so they look to have their mojo, their momentum back. Um, we know that's like. The Mahomes and Kelsey combo, that's already historic Hall of Fame level. It's one of the hardest to stop um, that we've seen in, of all time, really, at this point. Uh, so the Ravens are going to have their hands full, but Kyle Hamilton is a, one of the best safeties in the NFL already at such a young age. I can't believe he fell that far in the draft to the Ravens. Uh, oh. They got an absolute steal. Uh, so dynamic on – at every level, deep in coverage, coming down into the box. He's physical, um, can can really do anything that you ask of him. So those two matchups, I think, are going to be critical to deciding how this, this game sway, sways one way or the other. 100%. And I feel like Rasheed Rice is going to have to step up, too. He's been playing Definitely. well. Like, he's been good pretty much. I mean, honestly, he's been he showed flashes the whole season when he came, became, like, a full-time player and actually got a lot of the snaps and kind of narrowed down that receiving room and who was going to be on the field. He's been playing great. I think he played mm-hmm. great in that first playoff game. I think he had, like, 130 yards, a touchdown. He was going crazy. He even had some big catches in his last game, too. Yeah. But, like you said, if they're keying on Travis Kelsey, which they're going to do because it's Travis Kelsey. You have to. He, he's going to have to He's gonna have to win. Like, he's going to have to win against some of these, these corners. You're going to have to win his matchup and be kind of another safety blanket for Patrick Mahomes. So, that's mm-hmm. another interesting matchup I, I, that is probably going to be in this game to see if he can – if they, quote-unquote, neutralize Travis Kelsey, can Rasheed Rice be enough to step up and, you know, give them some production? Because, honestly, outside of him, I know MVS had a couple good catches last week, but – I'm not relying on that. McCole Hartman needs to be off the field. I'm not even going to put Tony in. <laughs> I'm not even put Tony in uniform. He's he's not playing. I'd tell you that much right now if that was the coach. But it's really going to come down to Travis Kelsey. Well, like I said, Pacheco, first of all, trying to get the run game, but then Travis Kelsey and then Rasheed Rice, seeing if they can win their matchups. Yeah. It, one thing I will say about Mahomes, and it kind of goes back to what I was, was saying earlier with how critical we were about their offense this season. He ain't lose trust in these boys, and and part of it is he better than me, <laughs> right? How to be like, bro? Nah, you're not getting the ball no more. You're done. Uh, the slot fade he threw to MVS against uh, Buffalo that was one of the prettiest passes I've seen all year. Yeah, it was beautiful. That was a like, dime. I don't like forget hitting him in stride. Like if you just had MVS stand where the ball was gonna land like this, that jump perfectly fell right in his hands like you could not you almost couldn't have handed it to him better and he threw it like considering where he's at in the pocket having to get it over to the right sideline that's like a 40 plus yard throw Mm -hmm. um but again just the fact that he's still throwing to these guys who consistently throughout the season were letting him down 
Um, shows a lot about who he is, um, understanding that he, he can't just rely on Kelsey for everything. And, yeah. and guys are stepping up. Like I said, NVS had a good game. Rasheed Rice has stepped up, especially towards the back half of the season. Um, that he is going to have to step up in this game um, and make a couple plays. He's going to have to win. He's going to get one-on-one opportunities. Um, he's going to have to going to have to get a couple of deep shots. Going to have to win on some some intermediate routes um, to be able to keep this offense moving. So I am very very excited for this game. I I low key don't think it's going to be super high scoring. I don't, I don't want to say it's going to be a low it. scoring game, but I, I mean I'm feeling like maybe low twenties for both teams. I don't say like 24, um, 21, something right. like that. Something These are like two that. stingy defenses, very stingy yeah. defenses. Um, and two defensive coordinators who are very crafty and creative and are going to just throw the kitchen sink at you in terms of different looks, different pressures. It, you know, it's looking like a zero look, but we're dropping eight. Sometimes we're like we're, we're coming out and it looks like a quarter shell and you're getting slot blitzes off like – there's going to be a lot of creativity on both defensive side of the ball. So I, I'm anticipating it to be a dogfight in the best way possible. 100%. Um, which brings us to the quarterback matchup. Lamar <laughs> versus Mahomes. Um, it almost sounds a little cliche, but the, the one – even trying to say it sounds crazy. The one who really does – make the most plays feels like is going to win the game. But again, it goes back to defenses being as stingy as they are one or two big third down plays, big conversions, you know, a fourth and goal conversion. That could be the difference in a game. That's going to be this tight as we expect it to be. Um, and I'm going to just go ahead and give my pick. I got Baltimore. <laughs> I got Baltimore because okay. For all the people who still are stuck on uh, Lamar, he's not. What, what did the radio host say? He's not. He's quarter, not quarterback. He's not quarterbacky enough. enough. <laughs> I genuinely don't know what y'all are watching, bro. It's insane, bro. It's ridiculous. Just talking out your ass, bro. Even it's it's funny. I saw. Uh, I think the NFL account posted it the last time that the the Chiefs and the Ravens played was a couple years ago. Um, and that was the one where John Harbaugh walked on the field and was like, Lamar, Lamar, you want to go for it? Mm. They went for it on the fourth one, got it, um, ended up icing the game. Um, th- what Lamar looked like in just those highlights, this is a completely different player. And this is Lam- that's Lamar post his MVP season. Facts. This is a completely different player in the best ways. It's not like he got – you know, he didn't lose his ability to run. He just understands now how to maximize that to increase his ability to pass. And that is what makes him so lethal this season. And he plays, he doesn't, he, nothing feels overly forced with him. Mm-hmm. Um, he makes the plays when they need to be. When he, it feels like running a lot of times, if it's not a designed run, it's his absolute last resort. He's not a, really a guy that has happy feet. He's usually, if he's scrambling, a lot of the times you see he's scrambling, he's jumping up in the pocket, he's getting defenders to bite, he's launching it past them. He's launching it into holes in the defense. Um, So he's maximizing the threat that his legs are to be able to expand the passing game for this Ravens team. Um, And, again, on the design runs, he's Lamar. He's he's recess football. Um, The plays that they've been, they ran twice uh, last week, that little kind of, like boot out fake, pull a tackle, get out in space. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Scary. Scary, bro. And a couple of them, one Jew go a little bit different way. He's taking that about 40, 50 yards to the house. So (laughs) uh, just the threat of that, I think, is is too much for the Chiefs defense to be able to contain for a full 60 minutes. Um, I said, on top of the fact that their, their run game still is as good, you know, with the backs that they have, um, I think their passing game is so much more dynamic this season, obviously bringing in a new offensive coordinator. Uh, I just think looking at it from just their offense, I think they're going to be able to get enough plays that they need defensively. I do have faith that Kyle Hamilton will be able to at least attempt to contain, make it difficult. You can only do so much in these kinds of matchups, but do his best to try to contain Kelsey 
Um, I think the Ravens will make enough plays to be able to to win this one and get Lamar to his first Super Bowl appearance. Hey, hey, hey listen, great analysis, man. <laughs> took the words out of my mouth, bro. I can't <laughs> listen. I, everything you said, I completely agree. Um, I feel like Lamar at this point, as a passer, has improved to the point where he is outside of Mahomes has a case of the scariest quarterback in the entire league. Because, 100%. like I said, when he extends plays with his legs, he's not just looking to take off a run. He he wants to throw the ball. Like mm-hmm. like I said, it's his absolute last resort. And that's like crazy that your last resort is the, one of the most deadliest weapons in the entire league as far as your legs. <laughs> You're right. So um, I do, like I said, I'm not going to fully repeat everything you said. Uh, I feel like you hit everything on the, on the head. But I do feel like Lamar this game, I feel like the Chiefs secondary is really good as far as, like, stopping receivers, shutting down receivers. I do mm-hmm. think Lamar will have a big running game, though, like it, with him with his legs. But right. I feel like that will kind of be the difference in, you know, them either winning this game or not. I feel like he is going to be able to extend plays, get out of the pocket, and make stuff happen, make big plays happen with his legs. I believe Mark Andrews is back playing in this game. Yeah. Um, I honestly going to be really interesting to see if they use him and Likely together. because I think awesome they thing. will. They, they should. Do. They ran a lot of uh, Lifely and Charlie Kolar last game. And then even sometimes, I mean, often they bring Ricard in and they'll throw Ricard in kind of as like a right. tight end too. So I imagine we'll probably see a mix between uh, – I, I think Lifely will probably still get a majority of the snaps. I can't imagine Mark Andrews is back to being 100% yet. So we'll probably see the two of them mixed in with Ricard as well. Yeah, but honestly, even if he's not – like Mark Andrews doesn't play like all the snaps and everything, that might be – not. it's not – Good, but like I do think that they spread the ball around a lot more when Mark Andrews wasn't in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Again, you want you know Mark Andrews there because he's a good weapon. But I think that as far as the way they've been playing offensively, it shouldn't be like Mark Andrews or Bus. It definitely shouldn't be like that. It should be spread the ball around. You got good weapons. Get Zay uh, Zay Flowers in space. Um, maybe hit Odell in a deep ball. Still get likely the ball. Like they have a lot of good weapons. Again, I do respect Kansas City secondary, so I think Lamar will have to extend plays and make some plays with with his legs. Um, I said on this, I said on this pod, man, I, it's so hard for me to bet against my home. I really, really I feel is. the same way. So for the fact that I, I can feel confident in saying, I, I believe the Ravens are going to win this game. And that's not to say that it's like, I, I would be like, oh my gosh, if the chiefs win, like, how did this happen? Like, right, right. it's my homes, bro. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's my homes. I, I just do genuinely feel that strongly about. Lamar and the way this offense has looked all year on top of the fact that we already said this defense is playing lights out if and the way that they're able to get after the quarterback without necessarily having to blitz they're like 26 in the NFL in blitz rate on third and fourth down and I think they led the NFL in the regular season in sacks mm-hmm. they're, they're able to get pressure with their their front four um, that's going to be critical in a game like this um, where sneakily again like Mahomes, not known as a guy who is a runner, but every single playoff run that he ha- has, um, in terms of like being in the postseason, he always has feels like moments where he has these like 20, 25 yard, big, huge rushes that are like backbreakers, like super effective. It's right. so it's heartbreaking because like he doesn't do it often, but when he does. It's like, bro, I saw some, I forgot who said it. It was like a cheese fan. It was like, is Mahomes the most effective runner in NFL history? It and feels it, that it was a joke. Gosh. I'm going to say it was a joke, but it low key wasn't because it's like every, it's every single time. It's always a big run to either get a first down. It was like that run in the, um, I guess the Bengals last year mm-hmm. to get the penalty. It was a run getting field goal. Like it's always something huge. It's always on like a third and like 17, something crazy. Right. But um, but yeah, man, uh it's it's tough. like I said, it's hard. It is so hard for me to bet against the Chiefs. But if I'm gonna be honest, bro, I feel the same way with the Ravens. Like, I really just feel like this is their year. Like, I feel like if any if there was anybody I was gonna bet against the Chiefs for, it would be the Ravens. Um, because there's a lot of stuff too. If you really look at it, I mean, this Chiefs team, don't get me wrong, they played good offensively these past two weeks, but they also played a very, very hurt Miami Dolphins team that couldn't get any pressure, and everybody was pretty much like mm-hmm. on IR. They also played a, a depleted Bills team who that that, that defense did not look or not even didn't look good. They actually looked good for the amount of people they had there. They were just right. very, very hurt. Like their key players was out. So I'm not discrediting what they're doing by any means, but it, this is a different animal. It's a completely different animal than this Baltimore team. And if you just look at the way Baltimore has played all year, even if their losses this year, they were in control of all those games. I think I believe they lost four times. Actually, well, technically three, because it was like week 18 against the Steelers. They didn't have play nobody. I'm not even counting that. 
I they think their three losses legitimately were one against the Steelers. I think it was mm-hmm. the Colts and the Browns, and they were in every single game, I believe, up until like the fourth quarter or something like that. Yeah. So they've looked good all year. The defense is elite. Like obviously, Lamar's playing great. The offense is playing great. I just think that I I, I got to go with the Ravens here. Like for everything you said, I just feel like this one feels like the one that they're finally gonna you know get past them and actually get to the Super Bowl. So I, I'm also gonna pick the Ravens. Yeah. And look, the the Ravens have played a lot of formidable opponents throughout the regular season. Right. And mm-hmm. they done molly Wop a lot of them. And yeah. then got to the playoffs. And like I said, the first half against the Texans was a little dicey. They, you know, Lamar that was rust. Went, I right, think it was rust. Lamar went into the locker room. He said some some things, apparently some expletives. <laughs> Can't not gonna say it here on the podcast, but they came out a different team in that second half and they started putting it on Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're humming at all cylinders. Um, you put it best. If there was a team that I feel even remotely comfortable about betting on against a Mahomes led Kansas City Chiefs team, it's this year's Baltimore Ravens team. So I'm not gonna lie. I almost feel like if the Chiefs won this game, they're winning the Super Bowl. I feel like whoever wins this game is winning the Super Bowl. I think that's also think, a valid point because it's like. I guess the, I'm picking the Chiefs versus the Niners because, no, I'm not counting on Brock Purdy. And I'm picking the Chiefs versus the Lions because I'm just going to pick the Chiefs. Yeah. And then if Baltimore wins, they done destroyed both them teams already. So mm-hmm. it's like I bad. Think whoever, it was <laughs> bad both times. So, honestly, I just think whoever wins this game, that's the Super Bowl champs. But you never know. Any given Sunday, I could be completely wrong. You never right. know. That's so. the beauty of it. Facts. Um, let's go. Let's go ahead and pivot over to the NFC. Then you see here, I got it on the screen. Uh, it actually was guaranteed <laughs> to be this matchup anyway, because Baker also was a number. That's one facts. That pick. is crazy, dang. That's yeah. wild. <laughs> so you have got a duel between the number one overall pick quarterback in Jared Goff against the literal last pick in the NFL draft, Mister Irrelevant, <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> two hundred and sixty second draft pick, Brock Purdy in the San Francisco forty. Niners. Look, I still cannot believe we're talking about the Detroit Lions in an NFC Championship game. This junk this is just, legit. This, we in somebody's Madden franchise right now. This ain't <laughs> real world, bro. There's no way. We're Dan Campbell's. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we are Dan Campbell's <laughs> franchise right now. Um, but look, I am uh I've been very impressed with Jared Goff this playoff run so far. Um he is a guy going back to what Cam Newton said, game manager. Look, that does not mean he's a bad quarterback. And maybe we should, maybe game manager is getting. I think it might be have it might have too much negative connotation for people to get the complexity of it. So mm-hmm. like, I think it's blanketing in like system quarterbacks. So maybe we need to add some nuance to it. But the gist of it is obviously golf is not to the elite. We just spent the last 10 minutes talking about Lamar Mahomes. He's not in that combo, bro. No. Um, but playing within the system, things are going right. You need him to make some timely throws. He's been able to do all of these things on this run and has hit some big, big throws. That fade to Amon Ra to put the game out of reach in the, the divisional round against the Bucks. that's a dot, bro. Facts. Um, so golf has been playing great. They've got weapons coming out of the backfield. The receivers have been great. Laporta looked good. This defense looks good. Um, so I I think, especially coming off of the Niners um, game against Green Bay, no matter who we pick in this matchup, there is a very real shot for Detroit in this game, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't feel like this is a runaway game, even though I'm sure San Francisco is going to be favored. It's at home. I think this Niners team, especially if there's no Debo, is vulnerable. 100%. Um, so I, I, what do you, what do you, let's, let's just, what do you think about this, this matchup as a whole? So, Originally, when you first look at it, you think, oh, Lions, Niners, like, Niners got this. Like, they're, they're going to beat the Lions. The Lions had a good season. It's – it's the Niners got this. When I really look deep into this matchup, it's very, very interesting because the Lions could 100% win this game. Like, mm-hmm. if you think about it, Jared Goff 
Honestly, Jared Goff is better when he's at home. There's no pressure. He's in a dome controlled environment. Like he honestly looks great when he's in that type of environment. It is going to be on the road, mm -hmm. but that offensive line is playing so great that like they can be able to like not allow pressure into Jared Goff. I believe against the Packers, I don't think the Niners got a sack in that game. So it's like they can hold up as far as that offensive line keeping him, you know, upright and not allowing a lot of pressure. Then we look on the defensive side of the ball. I think that I mean obviously the lines on the back end is very very soft. Like you can like big plays, they're susceptible to big plays like badly. But they're an elite run stopping defense. Like they do not give stuff up on the ground for the most part. Um, and I feel like I mean you're never gonna slow down Christian McCaffrey. But if it's one, if if you tell me, listen, you could allow the the allow Brock Perry to beat you or CMC to, you know, gas you on the run game. I'd rather stop CMC and just have Brock Perry try to beat you through the air. 100%. So that kind of that kind of plays into the Lions defense. So with the, that formula on both sides of the ball, keeping Jared Goff upright, not allowing a lot of pressure, and then slowing down the Niners run game, that right there, I already feel like that's a recipe for them to upset the 49ers. So I feel like those are, if I'm saying those are my two biggest keys as far as the Lions winning this game, even then, it, it, bro, it's it's just so tough, bro. It's so tough. Cause honestly, with both quarterbacks, I feel like I don't know what I'm getting 100%. Like when we talked about the previous matchup with Lamar and Mahomes, I feel like regardless, I'm getting their A game from both of those guys. Jared Goff on the road. Nah, I, I can't say I'm 100% certain that he's going to play great, even though he's been playing well. I can't say that. Both the two games that he just played was at home, controlled environment, no pressure. Then Brock Purdy, it's like, the idea of the secondary is sweet, but it's like they do have a good pass rush. Aiden Hutchinson's mm -hmm. been playing very well. If they can slow down the CMC, it's like, all right, now everything's on your shoulders. I don't know if I 100% trust him to, you know, win me this game. So from that aspect, it's a tough, like I said, I can see it going both ways. I lean, I, I lean the Niners. I really do. Mm -hmm. My heart wants the Lions to win, though. I'm going to be honest. My heart. <laughs> Definitely wants the Lions to win. But if I'm just mm -hmm. thinking with my head, I lean the 49ers just because at the end of the day, they do have an all-star team. They have talent all around the board. Now, if Debo doesn't play, that does make things a little bit tough, I'm going to be honest. Right. But at the end of the day, like I said, the key for the Lions to me would have to be slowing down CMC. They do have an elite run defense, but at the end of the day, that's the best running back in the league. Like He, he puts in work against pretty much everybody. So I, I think I'm leaning the 49ers in this one. I'm gonna piggyback off what you said because I, I agree with a lot of it. Um, Brock Purdy, I think, I have it pulled up here. He threw for the fifth most yards off of play actions this year, 969, um, and was uh, this looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth in play action attempts. Um, and that goes back to like we talked about in the past with the Shanahan offense. So much of why it's so effective is because so much of the pass game is married with the run game. They cut out, they get so many different looks out of the exact same sets and motions. And when you play action off of that, it gets very, very difficult to know what's coming at you out of defense. And before you know it, George Kittle is running an over route wide open for 35 right. yards. And he's about to get some yak up off of that, truck somebody, step on somebody. And now, mm -hmm. now he's got a 70 yard touchdown. So, <laughs> Like you said, with the Lions having one of the most stout run defenses, one of the key matchups in this game is first down. Facts. If you can get Facts. this Niners team behind the sticks and force into a position where you are not super concerned about the play action, there is a chance, like I said, that the opportunity for Detroit to be able to win this game is very real because that is something that they can do. I think they were the second or third best run defense um, in terms of yardage. Second best run defense in terms of yardage. Third in terms of yards per carry um, in the regular season. So they're able to consistently be able to get the Niners behind the change. They'll be able to get some decent stops. Put the ball in Jared Goff's hands. Get the playmakers involved. You get Gibbs going. You get the ball, ball to Amon Ra. Um, get Sam Laporta going. Um, for what it's worth, one of these quarterbacks has, has won a conference championship game before. Jared Goff been to a Super Bowl. That's true. Um, so he, again, and like one's you said, coming off a good game, one's coughing, coming off a really bad game, even though they won. Yeah, let's be and let's call a spade a spade. One's coming off of a game they should have they should have lost. 
That's facts. Because of that, of that, that person. Game. Right. They should have lost that game. The the 49ers are very, very fortunate that that is a young and inexperienced Packers team <laughs> who did not capitalize on a lot of mistakes. And some of them, them <laughs> some of them defenders got pants for hands. Facts. Because one or two of those things go differently. Again, I'm not going to live in hindsight. It happens. It happens. The Niners were the better team. They won the game. But one or two of those things go differently. We might be looking at an NFC Championship game in Detroit <laughs> with the backers and the Lions. And we were very close to do it if Jordan Love ain't channel his inner Brett, Brett Favre one throw. Yeah. Cross body. I still can't believe that throw, man. It, that was like uh... – Bro, even that was, was deflating fan. to watch, like, bro. I was like, "What?" I like, I was rooting for him so much. I'm like, "Bro, there's no way." And I'm looking back at it. I'm like, "The the decision, the throw, like there was no reason to make that throw at all. Zero. It was, it was just nothing. I can't even. You can't play devil's advocate with that throw. It's just nothing. Just he was away. better off literally just falling down. Like, bro, it was first down. It was first right. or second down. One or two. I'm like, "What are you doing, bro?" Just but, unnecessary. Yeah, it was uh, just in, inexperienced there. But yeah, going back to my again initial point, like I said, the, the key matchup is really going to be Niners offense, the Lions defense, early downs, first and second down. Can you get this offense in a point where it's third and long versus third and medium or third and short, where the opportunity to run is there, or even just the threat of a run is there? Um, because those I think are two different offenses. And like you said, you forget critique of Brock Purdy and whether you think he's a game manager, how good you think he is as a quarterback talent wise, whatever. If you even remove that CMC is too much of a lethal weapon, like Mm -hmm. regardless of who their quarterback is, which is why he's just got, you know, put up as a finalist for the top five for MVP voting before that comes out in the next couple of weeks. Um, you want it to be a game where you you're you're putting the ball in whoever that quarterback's is quarterback's hands is not a game where CMC can really start to lean on you. He's getting five, six, seven yards of carry. You're not winning that football game if that no. happens. So you got to get them behind the chains. It's crazy to say, but like you have to force if CMC is going to beat you, you got to force it in the passing game. Mm-hmm. Cannot come in the run game. Um, so you got to put the ball in Brock's hand. So. That is what I think is really going to come down to. If I have to lean one way, again, just like you, I, I'm going to pick the Niners in this one just off of, of sheer talent. Um, and the defense is still – it's unbelievable. We've seen Jared Goff again, in certain moments. He has not showed up in the best way. Um, and one or two big plays by this Niners defense – it's just it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be deflating. They're at home. Um it, it's a lot for the Lions to be able to overcome. And with their current core that they have now, I, I'm not sure that they're going to be able to do it. If I have to pick, that doesn't mm-hmm. mean I don't think it can happen again. I think it's going to be a tight game, but if I have to pick, I'm gonna take the Niners in this one. Um, but again, I think it's going to be a relatively tight game. I think it's gonna be hard fought on both sides. Uh, the trenches is going to be poof on both sides of the ball. Facts. Both sides of the ball are going to be getting after it. Uh, I'm excited to see Panay Suo go up against Bosa or Chase Young, whoever they're throwing out there on the edge. That's going to be a very, very exciting matchup. Another key matchup. That right side of the O line, I'm um, having Panay out there, being able to kind of stop um, some of the edge rushers that the Niners have, um, and then vice versa. We talked about this line's pass rush. Aiden Hutchinson has been having it going. Um, Obviously, he's probably going to see a healthy dose of Trent Williams at times. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited for both of these championship games. They're going to be a very, very good weekend of football. 100%. Another big thing, too, I feel like that's going to play a key factor in this game. Who comes out hotter? Like, who starts off the game better? Because if the Lions start out, say they 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 take the ball, they get an opening score, or say they go up 10 nothing, something like that. Then it's all the run defense is already good, but then you're already kind of playing catch up, so you're not running as much, and then it kind of mm-hmm. el- like eliminates the run game to an extent. But the same thing could be said for the 49ers. If the 49ers come out, they come out strong, then it's like, all right, they're at home. Now the pressure's on Jerry Goff on the road. Now they they can kind of pin their ears back and go for the pass rush. So I feel like 
a big thing is going to be whoever comes out stronger from the start of the game. So first downs as well, but also just who's going to come out stronger at starting the game. But a, a big thing, I kind of wanted to ask you this question. If the Niners lose this game and Brock Purdy plays bad, is he getting replaced? By who? I'm That's just saying. Like, all right, maybe not. Maybe not. All right, maybe not replaced. But like, are you sh- like looking around for another quarterback? I think it's tough. It would have to really be a situation where you you really feel like you can pinpoint a lot of the blame on Brock Purdy. It has to be a situation where it's like, yo, when Jimmy G missed the it was the post in the Super Bowl, oh, deep yeah. throw, mm-hmm. it's like. Brother, that was the time. Like, we don't ask a lot of you to make plays. That was the one we needed, and it didn't happen. Right. It would have to be moments like that um, in the sense that, you know, he would really have to have played so poorly that he would be the main reason why they lost. But even if that happens, like, who would you replace him with? I know that. Right, right. That's why I kind of changed it to are you at least entertaining the idea? Not just full on like yeah. we're getting rid of him, we're getting whoever. Like, no, nah, not like that. Because at the end of the day, he still put up crazy numbers in this system. But are you at least entertaining the idea that, look, we might not have the guy here at QB, which, again, is nuts because around like week four, 14-ish, 15-ish, bro was the MVP, which is right. crazy to go from MVP to league to – this guy's our weakest link. He's their biggest question mark. Because to me, that's kind of nuts. But yeah. I just thought it was interesting because that it would be two back to back. I don't listen. He did have a game winning drive. Don't get me wrong. But he played mm-hmm. bad in that last game. You go from that, and then to if he like play, has a really bad game and they lose because of that, I feel like that's at least an interesting discussion. Don't know if they fully do it, but it's an interesting discussion. I'll I'll cut him some slack because even going back to last year, he played well in their playoff games, obviously gets hurt. Don't really get to see him in the NFC championship game. Um, Last week against Green Bay, I feel like he definitely struggled to adjust to the rain. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he started the game with a glove on, threw a pass that should have got picked, took the glove off. And it just, his command on his touch on his throws seemed off the whole game. Not Brock Purdy X. It's something that he's very like, Go back to this whole system. Like balls need to be where they need to be on time. Um, that has been how he's been able to be successful all season. This has looked very different from that. Um, and I don't want to chalk it up to anything other than I, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and really say I think that he just was having trouble in the rain. He said he did have the game winning drive. Um, that pass to I think it was Ayuk right over the middle, or it might have been Jennings with a contested um, catch. Like yes, yeah. No, I'm on crazy. my team. I'm watching it like. I'm thinking it looked like it's gonna get picked, but you show the back angle and it's like skimming over people. Oh, that was I think that was the Jennings, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for last week. But like you said, if he comes out, puts up a bad game in this one, and they lose. Yeah, if you're if you're Kyle Shanahan, that thought does have to cross your head or cross your mind, but at the same time, you're able to have this loaded of a roster. Because he's on the deal that he's on. That's facts. So you go and bring somebody else in. You got to let some people go. Yeah. Ah, yeah. you know. So mm-hmm. I I stand firmly on the fact that I do think this Niners team, as currently constructed, can win the Super Bowl. I think talent wise, they're so overwhelming at every other position that Brock Purdy gets everything going. They're going to be insanely tough to beat. Um, 100%. So I, I don't think you have to make that change, even if he has a bad game, because it's tough. It's unfortunate. But even the best quarterbacks sometimes go and have playoff stinkers. Like, it's happened to the to the greatest ones either way. So That's going right. out and getting a different guy, I don't think is going to guarantee that, that you get a different end result. It's just it's just would be unfortunate. Facts. It's, it's tough. Even though I, I – Said it, it should be a good game. I can't, I don't think he'll have a flat out stinker. Like, I, I wouldn't predict that, but yeah, it'll be interesting. It's, it's gonna be some good games this weekend, definitely. Definitely gonna be some good ones. Uh, excited, excited for the championship, uh, conference championships, not excited for the Pro Bowl. <laughs> I feel like the Pro Bowl used to be a little bit 
I mean, I don't feel like the, the Pro Bowl never felt like the same level as like the All-Star. NBA All Star game did. Not even close. But I, I forgot. Like I've seen the commercials run for it now, and it's like the Pro Bowl flag football games. And I'm like, I had like double check. I was like, hold on, wait, flag. I was like, they are <laughs> doing flag now. That is crazy. I mean, but you can't like guys are not gonna go hard for full contact football for like it's, Look, there's no way to I don't have... I don't blame them, and I understand that this is pr- the next best thing you're gonna get, but it's like. Dang, how far we've come, bro. Remember when Sean Taylor drilled the punter, the <laughs> in punter the Pro Bowl? on Pro Bowl? Like that, like I said, that that's never coming back, bro. Them yeah. guys was all they was bugging <laughs> back then. No, that so, was crazy. Yeah, that, that stuff is never coming back. At least at least then you might see some nice reps, like you know, I see you know your favorite DB versus the elite receiver one on one. Like you might see some some cool stuff, but yeah, as far as like th- there's never gonna be a solution to have a like an all-star type game for football that wouldn't result in someone like getting seriously injured. Now they're like, dang, I just did that for no reason. Right. I think they want to, they want to boost the ratings. I feel like people will watch this, bro. You should do a seven on seven with like, obviously like the QBs run back receivers and then just do seven on seven with just linemen. So just do like just do like Oklahoma type drills or like one on one. No, like, no, seven on full on. Oh, seven you mean like seven like throw the line? That would be yes, gas. I'm not gonna lie, that'd be fire. That's like, a good idea. That'd be like, fire. Go out there. Let me get Zach Martin out receiver, and then put freaking uh, don't even matter. Put uh, Rashawn Gary at corner. That would be. Let me, let me I'd watch that. Nose tackle versus the center one on one from the 15 yard line. Let me see what you got. <laughs> I would I would watch that. And that the lineman got lineman got to be throwing too. I yeah, need, it got to be a lineman QB. It got to be a line. It got to be a lineman QB. Yeah, that'd be fire though. I'd watch that. That would be hard. Like a full on AFC NFC seven on seven just lineman. I would watch it just to just to see it. Just to see what's gonna happen. I'd watch it just to laugh because it'd be hilarious. And you might see some cool. You might really see some lineman with some skills. Like you might see some one hand like. Might see something crazy. You never know. Some of these dudes used to they bro, they in high school, they used to be tight ends, quarterbacks, whatever. They just that growth curve just kept hitting and hitting and hitting. And eventually they was like, you want to get into two point stance. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, but look, bro, in college at practice, uh, we used to go and do one-on-ones on walkthrough days. It was before <laughs> stretch. We would go out there, everybody get out there early, and we doing one-on-ones, and I'm seeing some nasty routes in the worst way. <laughs> like that, you know that meme that's going around with that one dude and that uh, I think yes, in the Texas yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what ex- look like. That's exactly what we were doing. <laughs> um, but no, I think that'd be that'd be dope. Let me see, let me see these big it. boys out here doing seven on seven. You don't, it don't gotta be. Let's not. We don't gotta do sixty minutes. Maybe actually, how many pro? How many linemen make the Pro Bowl? It's, it's probably like. Is it just seven or eight? Offensive lineman. I'm about to pull it up real quick. So I'm trying to think. I don't. I don't want them to be out here. They're gonna be gas. <laughs> they could just honestly. They could just do a couple like possessions, bro. They don't even need to do a whole game. I just need to say first, a couple. Possessions. First, first is twenty-one. First twenty-one. Facts. I was say it don't need to be nothing crazy. Just a couple possessions. You know what I'm saying? And then call it a day. Yeah. I watch it definitely at least the first year. I'd 100 watch it the first year. Okay. And if it's fire, then I'd, I'd keep watching it. Yeah. I low key feel like I would, I would be more interested in watching a lineman seven on seven flag football game than the Pro Bowl flag football game. I'd rather watch like wide receiver corner like one v ones like that too. I'd rather see that like be sauce fire. versus like Jettas in like a one v one like that'd be crazy. Just re- constant reps, just back to back to back. So I'd rather see that than a full on like seven on seven. That would be hard. Actually, yeah, bro. Just throw, throw the whole Pro Bowl out. <laughs> this is what we're about to do. We're about to do lineman seven on seven. It's gonna be not it's not gonna take that long. First 21. Then bow. Prime time is just one on ones. All the AFC receivers over here, all the NFC receivers over there. And you get the uh and uh, uh the DBs. Mm, and you that's... just you pick you pick your side, AFC on offense. How how many reps you want? Everybody get everybody get three reps. I'm about to say each play. Yeah, there you go. Each player gets at least three reps. That'd be hard. Each player get three reps. First rep, it, bro. I, we we cooking right now. <laughs> <We're cooking. laughs> First rep, you get everybody lined up. You get all the receivers, tight ends, DBs, linebackers. 
First round, all the receivers, you get to pick your opponent. One by one. By call one people out. Like, call people out. <laughs> First round. Second set. Boom. DBs. You get to call out your receiver. Bow. Third set, whatever. Random. Pick it out of how. I don't care how you do it. Mm, that's hard. Fire. That would be elite television. Roger Goodell, bro. Come on. We're cooking over that's, here, bro. I ain't going to lie. That's hard. That is, that's hard. I, I like that. I like that idea. Yeah, get get this flag football up out of here. That's for the Olympics now. I will say that listen, the 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 Twitter memes, everything will go. Listen, let you get cooked on a one v one. Let you get cooked on a one v one, or let you get strapped on a one v one. Slow for you. Mm-hmm. It's slow for you. That's bro, never leaving the, the timeline. Energy, like bro, come on, the energy be crazy. Let a DB get a pick. Whole oh, yeah. co- whole strapped conference in- going crazy. She get straps some up in the inning and then picks it off. It's slow. It's over. The energy would yeah. be insane. See, we we just cooked up. That was crazy. Oh, dear. you still everybody gets love. Like you still gonna have whatever Pro Bowl QBs. Let let them pick their QB. Whatever, it don't matter. Mm-hmm. We'll rotate them every throw. Yeah, look, that's gonna be a short. We about that's we cooking up. That's hard. That's hard. We cooking up. That's a, actually I'm gonna make it a short video. How to save the Pro Bowl. Facts. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, excited, excited for playoff football to continue. I can't believe it's almost Super Bowl. It felt like the season flew by, bro. It did, and I'm not looking for – like, I love playoff football, but playoff football just means we're getting closer to playoff football being over. And I feel like, for me personally, like, basketball comes back at a good time. I don't ever feel like we're like, dang, like, it's still in basketball season. Like, football, I feel like it takes so long for football to come back, bro. It feel like football is going for the whole 365. I yeah, swear. It does. It does. Um, but speaking of basketball, we do got to highlight some stuff. We put out the, the instant reaction, obviously, to the Terry Rozier trade and Adrian Griffin getting fired, which Doc Rivers is now officially the head coach of the Milwaukee Bucks. So that has been finalized. Any additional thoughts differently than what we had on the reaction video? I just saw, uh, it's funny because I just saw like a, a TikTok video. It was Gilbert Arenas. And he was just like, so the coach, he's going over Doc Rivers coaching resume. <laughs> His dude was just like, all right, cool. He, he was Orlando. Okay. Flamed out. He was with the Celtics. All right, cool. Fl- it kind of sucked. Got three Hall of Famers. Won a chip. All right, cool. Ain't do shit after that. Okay, cool. <laughs> you went to the Clippers. Okay. Flamed out. You went to the 76ers. Flamed out. Had some good players. All right, you're hired. And I was like, bro, that's facts. <laughs> like, bro, what? I, 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 bro, I don't, I truly don't get it. And the fact that you wrote this up, the fact that he was consulting or like giving them advice and it not working. And I saw, like, no, I right. saw a report that this has been in the work since December. He's, bro, is that not dirty Mackin? He, I was about to say he probably was giving bro terrible advice on purpose. He's probably, like, yeah, bro, like, bro, listen, you don't need to guard the perimeter, like. They're gonna miss eventually, bro. Just like let them let them keep shooting. Got bro fired, and now he's about to. What if he just comes in and they're like strapping on defense? Like they're just everyone's bought in, they're locked in. <laughs> they end up going on a crazy win streak. They turn into a top the top half of the league defense. Adrian Griffin, he needed nah, he need to do something, bro. Bro, if they do that, first of all, if I'm Adrian Griffin, I'm I'm going as hard as I was going. I'm going ten times harder now. I'm doing 100%. whatever it takes for me to get another head coaching job. Let me see Doc Rivers in a playoff series, bro. I let him go up two one. I let him do it. I want to add to that. Let him go three no. one. Right. Doc <laughs> Rivers has the most blown three one lead as a coach in NBA history. And I want to add to that because after you did me dirty, I'm adding to that list, bro. Crazy, crazy. Like, bro, you getting you in conversations to become the coach in December. He got fired. What January 20, 23rd, 22nd? It's tough, man. He got That's set up. Big. Ain't that illegal? Can they do that? Are they allowed to just do that, bro? I mean, I think when you're in your own, uh, I guess when within your own organization, that's fine. Cause like they kind of, it's like going back to football too. Like even with uh, Patriots new coach, um, they're like, uh, yeah, he had it. Yeah. yeah, like he had it in his contract or something that he was the next head that's coach. So if it's in your organization, I guess it's fine. But it know. would it's, be it's just different weird. if it would be different if Doc was an assistant. It's like you're a consultant, you're commentating for right. ESPN, and it's like behind the scenes, you like in cahoots with them, and it's like you telling him one thing, then you go to you getting you know you're about to get the job. It's I, the whole situation smells funny. It smells funny. 
That uh, yeah, it's weird. I'm not gonna lie, it's weird. I don't think that, uh, that yeah, <laughs> it's just weird. It's a weird situation. I've seen people try to rationalize it and be like, obviously, Doc has experience. He's had experience dealing with big personalities. Obviously, he had the big three in uh, Boston. He dealt with Lob City. He had Joel and James and, and before uh, in uh, in Philly. So he knows how to deal with egos. Typically, defensive minded coach. They know offense isn't the issue with this team. I I hear you. I hear you on all those things, but they had to do it. I think like like if we talked about in the reaction, they kind of had to do it because at this point, the fact that you are still contending, you can't just run with the the interim guy. Like you kind of got to bring somebody in that at yeah. least at least knows ball a little bit. So kind of they kind of had to do it, I guess. It's it's I still like bro the two seed and you got fired on your day off. You saw the pregame warm ups with the Bucks. They was mad happy, lit happy. <laughs> hey, like yo, I, yo, I think it, yo, bro, football and basketball. When somebody gets fired, mainly football, because it normally happens during the season of football. And after the dude gets fired, I swear to the next game, they be so lit, bro. They be they come out firing on all cylinders. They be they, they hustling, going hard. Yeah, I, I guess it says a lot because they must have hated that dude. Apparently, man. Apparently, <laughs> crazy. Um, but other big things around the NBA we did not touch on in our instant reaction video. That boy Joel Embiid done went set the franchise record and got himself as the ninth player to ever put up 70 or more points in an NBA game, drop a 70 ball on the Spurs. Also, that game put his points per game total or average on the season. Over 36. He's having a ridiculous, like, he's having one of the best seasons of all time. Like, just one of yes. the best pure seasons, at, like, of all time. And I will be pissed if they don't get out the second round. Because what are we doing this for, bro? Like, right. come on. But if we're strictly talking about the 70-point game, I'm not going to lie. I was watching that game from start. I missed a little bit of, like, the third. But pretty much start to finish. After the first quarter, I was like, hey, he's getting 60. <laughs> I was like, bro, Can't he's guard getting... him. He, I, and... why, why are we not doubling, though? Like, whoa. Honestly, in a lot of – at least in the beginning, a lot of his points just came off of him just being too big for everybody, bro. Like, that too. he's on board, go back up. Get a board, go back up. Like, get in the paint, easy layup. Like, And then, obviously, he, you know, he does Joel Embiid things, show his skill set off, which mm -hmm. he's like – Joel Embiid is so – like, for his size, it's ridiculous how skilled he is as a basketball player. That yeah. little jab step midi he be hitting consistently, bro. It's cash every time. It's insane. But yeah, he was he was he's just too big, bro. There's not bro, honestly, they could have doubled it. It was nothing they could have did, bro. He was just too big. But it was insane to watch. Honestly, Crazy. insane. Yeah. So for those of y'all that didn't see, put up 70 against the Spurs. His full stat line, 70 points on 24 or 41 from the field. He went 21 of 23 for the, from the foul line. And before y'all were like, ah, here we go. Foul bane, foul merchant. They were hacking him. They were, they yeah. can't, they were They can't guard him. Um, 18 rebounds, nine offensive, nine defensive, five assists, a steal, and a block. Ridiculous, for, I, think it, I think it was the first 70-10-5 uh, game ever. It was ridiculous, bro. It was insane. Like, absurd it's wild but i mean hey like i said and you know what will also suck is if he don't play enough games to win the mvp that would also it's very suck. it's very real it's very exactly. possible and he's already missed 11 or 12 games this year um, see like that's bro. what's your your the cap is 17, 17. right you gotta you gotta play 65, you 65. so you have to play yeah you can only 17. miss 17 games he, he got all right listen he gotta suck it uh, do they have like penalties if he like checks in, like takes a shot and like checks out? Do they have? I don't. I don't remember. I think there's like some stuff around it, um, but there's also stuff that they wrote in about like legitimate injuries. Like you can appeal if you're like, yeah, you only played 62 games. It's like you had this injury. Like you you weren't load managing. I'm interested to see how they handle it when it comes to that point in the season because I'm sure a lot of people are going to put in appeals to get in. Mm -hmm. on these end of season awards and rightfully so like 
bro, we're talking upwards of $30, $40 million in contract difference for some of these guys if they can or can't get on all NBA teams. A guy like Tyrese Halliburton, who has literally $40 million on or off the table, whether he does or doesn't make all NBA. How he's playing this year, if he just hits the criteria, he's going to be an all NBA player most likely. So it's like, that's tough if he doesn't hit it. But he had a legit injury. Bro done did a full split on the court. Yeah, I was about to say it has to. We ha- it has to be. It can't just be straight up like no sixty five done. Like it ha- like like I said, if it's a legitimate injury, like seriously they miss it a good amount of time. Like they have to be able to appeal that or something. But then you get that you get into muddy waters because it's like now everything's gonna get so subjective. Like what what's what's fair? Like ah, you didn't play through this sprained ankle. You didn't do, you know, you sat out this game, you know, like I, I listen, no, nah, you're you're right for sure. It has to be like a like a you missed a continuous amount of time for this. It's not like I played I played Monday, I missed Wednesday, I played Thursday, I missed Saturday for the same injury. Like it's not like it can't be something gotcha. like that. It gotta be like I hurt myself. I was out for three weeks for this injury. It's a legitimate injury, you know what I'm saying? It can't be just be like I play when I want to play because of soreness or whatever. Yeah, it's tough. I, I do really think the only way they'll be able to do it with any type of certainty is to actually be like, nah, if you did not play 65 games, you're not this cut. I don't care what you did. Like every single game you missed could have been for a legitimate reason. You didn't take any low management, no rest. Like you have to stand firm on that, or I feel like it becomes a slippery slope of. Guys are going to figure it out and work it out and be like, ah, it's getting reported that they got a grade one strain or something when it's like ah, they just they want to take a game off or their team is trying to low manage them, which I think is fair. Um, but I don't know if this was the best way for them to approach it. So I, I think it's interesting how they're going to play it out at the end of the season. But look, like you said, this is one of the most ridiculous seasons we've ever seen. And we're like getting to watch legitimately will type numbers from this guy mm-hmm. 36 11 and six assists for him he's top 25 in the league in assists per game he looks like a complete basketball player he's, he looks like the most unstoppable player in the league right now right i i said this after watching that game i i think he clearly has to be in the discussion of most unguardable player ever. You have of to put the most or just one of the most though. Of one of the most. Like okay. I think when I when you talk about most unguardable players, literally the first two people that come to mind are Shaquille O'Neal and Kevin Durant. I think it's yeah. gonna be hard to dethrone either of those two. But like guys who you would throw in consideration for that, he has to be mentioned at this point. I say of yeah. all time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because like I said, it's like it's the fact that he has this huge size and he can kind of body you in the paint, but he's also so skilled offensively. And then when you hack him, like the difference, the difference with Shaq is like, all right, we foul you. You're only making 50% of those free throws. You foul and beat, he's knocking all those down. So it's right. like, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's he's definitely up there for sure. That's why, like I said, I just want – you don't gotta, you don't even got to win a ring. Like I'm not one of those people that like, oh, you don't want to ring, you suck. But like I really – matter of fact, Honestly, bro, even if you don't make it out the second round, if you just play to the same level, right, and y'all lose to a better team, I'd be like, all right, cool. Like, just don't have a 10 point per game drop off come playoff time. Cause then people are gonna, at that point, it's gonna be like, not to bring up your guy, but it's gonna be like kind of like Dak Prescott, where like, it don't matter how good of a se- regular season you have. It's fair, though. Bro, he can average 40. If I right, say this season, right, he can, continues on this path, even wins MVP, and he comes into the playoffs and only his average is 24. In, in 10 and then they lose in the second round bro he could average 45 next season nobody's gonna care bro it's not gonna mm-hmm. matter because you just everybody's gonna be like oh you're gonna flame out in the playoffs so who really cares right it, it's funny you say that but people were after the cowboys lost to the packers dudes was like what's the nba comparison for that joel and beat is what a lot of people were joking around <laughs> and saying what's right. the nba comparisons for the, the cowboys oh they just the, the they just the 76ers <laughs> great in the regular season yeah doggy in the postseason. Facts. So yeah. I think I think two things can be true, and I think there's a nuanced line to walk when people have discussions about how good a player is because I you can't acknowledge, like I just said, I think Joel Embiid is one of the most unguardable players we've ever seen touch a basketball in NBA history. 
At the same time, I think he has a lot that he has to deliver in the playoffs. Combine the two, yeah, they have an impact on his legacy, but there are some people who are like, they don't care about this because he doesn't have this. I think that's the bad way to think about that's, it. Yeah, that's dumb. That's dumb. You can't, it's not like that. Or it shouldn't be like that, I should say. Right. You can acknowledge how absurd what we're seeing. And you should, because if you're hating hard like this in a moment because he hasn't done it in the playoffs, you are literally depriving yourself of just being able to sit there and enjoy the fact that we are witnessing greatness out of him. Like, bro, that stat line is ridiculous. 70, 10, and 5 had never, be done, never been done before in NBA history until he just did that. Mm-hmm. So don't, like like I said, both things can be true, and you can use that and critique it fairly like you will. That does not make him a scrub, bro. Facts. Makes him a guy who right now has not done it in the playoffs. And injuries or otherwise has had a lot of times in the playoffs where he hasn't shown up. So that's tough. But, look, at the end of the day, looking at just this season, Joel B going absolutely crazy. 70 points in a win. Flip side, the same night, and this is crazy because it's happening. What is it? Fifteen years after Kobe dropped eighty-one. Yeah, it was the same. Yes, right? to the same day anniversary. I'm watching the NBA stuff go on, and I'm keeping track on my phone. I see somebody screenshot the Timberwolves box score. Cat got forty-four in the first half. I said, "Hmm, forty-four times two. That's eighty-eight. <laughs> is he about to break the record? <laughs> he going for?" He said, I'm passing Kobe. He's going for Will. Facts. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Against the Charlotte Hornets, Carl Anthony Towns proceeded to gun like crazy and shot hunt in the second quarter so badly. And I, you can't even just blame him. The whole team collectively. They admitted it. They did it. Yeah. yeah. It was clearly trying to get him shots, and I get it, hot hand. You know, it was 44, 44 in the first half. He got a chance to do something absurd. I understand. At some point, y'all got to be like, all right, bro, we go- <laughs> record or the loss. Like, right. <laughs> and that, yeah. they, they shot themselves to a point where they actually lost this game to the Charlotte Hornets. It, that might have been the worst 60 point like performance ever. It's the most go- I say it's the goofiest 60 point performance ever. Like it, you texted me, you was like, yo, cat, you was like, cat got like what well, he got like 58 or something crazy. Like, yeah, that. And like with like nine minutes to go in the third quarter. I'm like, bro, he's really like, you better turn this on. This could be right. something. I, I tuned in, I saw it for a little bit. Then, like, I think I, I went away and I tuned back in like the fourth. And I'm like, Where's Cat at? Like, why is he not on the court? How do you set the franchise record? Most points scored in a game. You got benched down the stretch. (laughs) That is insane, bro. That's wild. Chris Finch was hot at the podium after the game. You seen that? Yeah. That's the the most immature display of basketball I've ever seen. (laughs) He wasn't wrong, bro. Bro got... Bro, you dropped 60 and you got benched. <laughs> Crazy, bro. I gotta Let see me some. see if I could... Oh, I wish I could pull up like how many minutes he played in a fourth. But I'm looking and I'm like... Because I, I was driving for a portion of the fourth quarter. And so I had the game on my phone. And I, I, I glanced down. And I was like, hmm, it's like <clears> five, six minutes left. This is a close game. Like, no, Cal, like, oh, maybe he getting a breather. Three minutes left. Two minutes left. I'm like... Don't he got 62 points? Like, you're not trying to check him back in or nothing? Right. But, like I said, I think he Finch was really fed up with, like, no, y'all are not playing basketball the right way. And he's really, like, watching it was gunning crazy hard, forcing up ridiculous shots, just trying to hunt the record. And it ended up costing them because Brandon Miller came to play. He's been open. He has been, bro. 27 points on 11 of 13 from the field. Crazy efficient. Crazy efficient. And right. the dagger, that little little lean over or like that fade was away. Crazy. That was a tough, tough shot. Tough shot, bro. That was tough a super shot. tough shot. 
I'm trying to a low key. I'm trying to find it. I can't see if I find it because I don't want to say it and it'd be wrong. So I just seen it on Twitter. Did he have a zero plus minus? Cal Arthur Towns in that game. Oh, Anthony Towns had a zero plus minus. Yeah, that's all I was trying to figure out. I was like, how do you like that's, <laughs> that's 60, nuts. You individually scored sixty two points, and while you were on the floor, the the Charlotte Hornets also scored sixty two points. <laughs> That's so nuts, bro. And Vance stats be funny sometimes. <laughs> Cause like what? So how does that even make sense? But I watching just, it, I it should say sense. at least minimally while he was on the floor, the Hornets scored however much he they put up while he was on the floor, not apples to apples, but the fact that funny. you single handedly put up 62 points, you couldn't even have a plus one, bro. <laughs> like that's crazy. You was just it's funny though because Honestly, out of all of the, or at least all of the players that are skilled enough to drop 60, if you just took the player away, it was like, yo, somebody in the NBA is going to score a goofy-ass 60 points, get benched, <laughs> shot chuck. Cat would be one of the names I'd be like, he's in that top five of people that I would have guessed first to do that. Because mm-hmm. he just, <laughs> it's just funny because it's called Anthony Towns, bro. Oh, that's insane. Wild, 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 wild. Tale of two big scoring games one of them is going down in history as again first 70 10 and 5 crazy display of just a full full offensive use it use a word full offensive onslaught Hmm. by and b the other one is going down in infamy because you just set the franchise record and a loss to a team that had nine wins on the season insane disgusting Disgusting. I'm also looking at a headline here that says Giannis was surprised that Adrian Griffin got fired. You buy that? No, not at all. Not one bit. I don't either. No. He said, I've got to trust the front office. I've got to trust the ownership group that they consider the bigger picture. Man, you know they hit you up. Bro, they, you have input in everything else. Now, all of a sudden, you're like, I don't know. He, should, he That's how LeBron used to be when he fired coaches. Like, it's, I don't make the decision. I don't run for an office. Whole time, it's like, bro, we know they're not moving a muscle without your say so, bro. Like, stop it. <laughs> this is completely unrelated. Well, it's, it's kind of related based on what we just talked about. Bro, you were – I only saw it because, uh, again, because the – the anniversary of Kobe point of 81. They posted a LeBron clip of him talking about, yeah, man, before the game, bro, I was watching it with my friends, and I just said, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> he going for 70 tonight. <laughs> but I don't know what it was. Some just, you know, some just made me say it. And then he hit 70, and I was just like, you know, I think he should go for 80. <laughs> Dude, just be lying for no reason, bro. Bro, that is <laughs> – just be lying, bro. Because that like is 70, hilarious. Because saying 70 is like stop it, bro. Like, what are you talking about? Dude claim he like called everything, like he just knew ahead of time. He just he just see the future. Like Brian, Brian's hilarious. Brian's the funniest liar, like in the play. <laughs> Not just basketball, but just in general, the funniest liars like in the world. It's hilarious. That video just cracks me up every time I see it, bro. Um, uh, also, Wizards then then fire their coach. They move Wes Unseld over to the front office and then promoted assistant coach Brian Keith to be the interim for the rest of the season. And then they're going to do a full scale head coach search in the off season, which I probably the right move. They need a guy in there who can like, they need a developmental coach. We talked about a while ago, how Jamal Mosley was known as a guy who was great at developing young talent. And it might be a guy that you then get a different coach for once that talent is ready to take that next step to really contend. So you need to go out and get a guy um, who can just mold a lot of – got a lot of raw clay there. <laughs> he needs to get molded. Mm-hmm. Um, and so – and I don't mean that to say I think Jamal Mosley has probably proven a lot of that wrong this year at how the Magic have played, or at least even in contention out east with as young of a team as they are. But, um Yeah. Definitely, definitely an interesting move for the Wizards. I'm going to see what that turns out to long-term. Anything else around the league? Oh, how did I forget, bro? 
We got Wimby versus Chet part two last night. That, that's what I was going to say. So you said anything else, I was going to bring that up. Because I know you went to the game. You alive. <laughs> you know, see, you see, I thought I'm surprised that wasn't one of the little topics up there, to be honest with you. It, but I feel like in the grand scheme of things, I don't know. Because last night you also had the whole Suns Mavericks Booker catching fire. Bro, that was the craziest. Like, bro. I'll just bring it to real quick. It just how did they they went from I watched that entire game start to finish. And I I the, for the start of the game, I was like, oh my god, the Mavs are insane. They was not missing a shot. I'm like, Luca, he go he kills the Suns every time. He's about to go for another 40, 50. Then it just got cold, started turning the ball over, started chucking, and then the Suns just came back and back and back and back. Then third quarter happened, and Devin Booker was like, All right, let me stop stretching and just Started tweaking. I mm -hmm. he just started becoming a flamethrower, and then it just blew him out. It was insane. That was the wildest. It was the craziest turn of events I've seen, and it's crazier coming from the Suns, who are just love making twenty point comebacks for some reason. Like right. I feel like I don't know what's up with them. They just want to do that on purpose. I went to go get a beer. They had the Suns game on at the concourse, and I looked up. I'm like, oh my gosh, Suns getting smoked. I'm sitting back in my seat. It's like. uh Late in the third quarter is a timeout. The PA announcer comes on. And he's like, here are some of the scores around the association. They put them all up on the TV. I'm like, the Suns won by 21? Right, bro. Yeah, What was happened, like, bro? And Devin Booker happened. And then the Mavs also shot themselves in the foot. But it was, it was whatever. Crazy. Going back to Wemby versus Chet. Obviously, the Thunder smoked them. To be expected. This Spurs team... Who watching it like in person rougher than TV? It's it's a lot of guys up here who are in roles that they do not need to be in. It's not to say that they're bad players. It's just they're being asked to carry more of a load than they should. And some guys up here, they're not ready to be rotational players in the NBA. Not right now. But with all of that. I'm gonna say right now, this is it's, it's again Stephen A. Say it's fluid. Right now, Wemby is the rookie of the year. I could not agree more. I completely switch. I gotta let you talk, but I because I was a chat guy in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I let you talk. I flipped too. Go ahead. Wemby last night in 28 minutes of game time, just 28, 24 points, uh, 12 rebounds, four assists, a steal. Four blocks, and I think he probably should have had at least one more that they called a foul on that I do not think was a foul. 28 minutes. He's averaging – let me post up. He's averaging 3.2 blocks a game in 28 minutes of game time. Scary, man. <laughs> it's, it's scary, bro. For all of you who are listening, if you are a NBA fan, if you love, even if you're not an NBA fan, if you love a game of basketball, I, I'll dial it back further. If you enjoy sports, <laughs> if you like seeing wild things, please, the next time the Spurs are in your city, buy a ticket, bro. Just go look, go see it with your own eyes. I, I tried to watch him earlier in the year. He is in the preseason. He sat out. It's the first time I got to see him in person with my own two eyes. It is genuinely, what was it, 2K16 where they had the, the glitch? My players, yeah. Yes. Somebody went, and it's like they plucked him out of the TV and put him on a basketball court, bro. It he I was looking at him stand next to, um he was standing next to Keldon Johnson. Keldon Johnson, I think, is 6'5", 6'6". Six, six. Mm-hmm. It looked like me standing next to an NBA player. <laughs> like, it is so wild to see it in person. He moves fluid. Like, it's, it's so fluid. He's bringing the ball up the court um, pretty consistently. The whole arena, like, every possession is, like, screaming at them. Why does he not have the ball? Because there's a lot of times where he, he was getting guarded a lot by J-Dub in yeah, the post. Exactly. I'm yelling. I'm like, bro, throw him the rock, bro. You don't got to force it, but, bro, swing, swing, find an angle for the entry pass and get him the ball. And it's not even to say he's going to score. 
because obviously a lot of times they're sending a double immediately. Somebody's got to come down because it's he's too much. But in person, bro, it is ridiculous. Just with stuff that he can catch, how high he can go, his reactions on the defensive side of the ball, nothing is safe around the rim if he is remotely close, bro. Nothing is safe. And he should have put Chet on that poster. I wanted him to finish that so bad, bro. Oh, I, I got out of my seat, that. even though he missed it. Just the fact that he attempted it. Bro, he was, bodied he was him. He putting his shoulder into They started going at it. That little six-minute stretch to start the fourth quarter. The game was over. I seen Thunder fans on Twitter making fun about it. He doing all this, and they down 30. Yeah. The Spurs team suck. Whatever. Y'all are tied. I think y'all are the one seed in the West right now. Completely different sides of the spectrum. Just this individual matchup. Wemby got it, bro. Wemby, Wemby was awesome. Wemby got it. He, he was look, awesome. He, he looked like a guy that was like, he looked like he knows, like, we suck. But me and you was getting matched up this rivalry week. I'm going at you. I'm going to win something. Like, I'm, I'm right here with something. So, mm-hmm. nah, he, he 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 really took it to him. And, I, like I said, I wanted him to finish that dunk so bad. But, you know, honestly, as a guy who was on Chet's side as far as rookie of the year, I believe like a couple months ago or like weeks ago from school, however long it was, I, I, I flipped, bro. I definitely flipped. I, I believe Wimby is definitely the rookie of the year right now. And a lot of it is the fact that – because I, I believe we probably talked about this a little bit. I, I kind of flipped. I don't feel like – impact on winning for an award like rookie of the year should really matter because Wimby one is more important to his team and it's like impact on winning if you flip them Wimby's doing the same thing if not better so it's like I think it should only be viewed as like if you want to boost Chet's case you could use that but I do not take the fact that the Spurs are what are they eight nine eight and 36 don't you can't hold that against Wimby I just sat up here and told you a lot of these guys could probably benefit from some G League run to be honest Mm -hmm. with you it's just this is not a comp like a fully fleshed out NBA roster. Exactly. And Chet's not the, the best player on his team. He's not the number one option. Like Wimby is just more in, important and impactful to his team. Um, so yeah, I, I to me, I I flipped. I'm on Wimby's side right now. But it is fun, even though, like I said, teams wise, like it's not even like close, but just mm-hmm. seeing the individual matchup between two unicorns is it's it's definitely fun to watch. It's gonna be right. it's gonna be hyped up for as long as they're both in the NBA. Like this and it never, should be. It's, yeah, it should. It definitely should until another seven foot seven demigod comes from freaking Uruguay comes into the league. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it goes crazy. So, but it, it's fun though. It's going to be fun to watch for, for years to come. Yeah. And look, shout out to Chet too. He put up a good stat line 17, nine, and four. Got himself three blocks as well. Um, had it like in some big blocks, not just, you know, baby wipes. Like his presence at the rim is felt. Um, yeah, that, that is my, my biggest, biggest, biggest takeaway from this game. If y'all consider yourself to enjoy watching basketball, even remotely, bro, I'm, I, I am imploring you to go and get a ticket the next time the Spurs are in your city and just, just see it for your own two eyes, bro. Multiple times at the game, my jaw is like dropping. I just, what, what am I looking at? It's Mm. so, it's wild to see. Wild to see. It's wild to see it on TV is even crazier. It'd be like it's right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I gotta come down there for a sit for his first game one of these days. I bro. need to see it. He, bro, he came out after halftime, like when it was you know they shooting doing warm ups. Free throw lined up. <laughs> I believe it. yeah, it's probably no I, no no like no one else in the arena saw it. I'm like, bro, did y'all not just see that? He <laughs> just casually like he put the basketball and just. Bro, it's too easy for him. What, bro? Jogging. He's not even running. <laughs> like, come on. Like, it's it's insane, insane. So y'all y'all have to go see it with your own two eyes. Um, but yeah, Wimby doing all of this. Uh, like I said, his current counting stats right now. He's averaging, um, I think it's twenty point three points per game, twenty point four points per game, ten point one rebounds, three assists. A steal, 3.2 blocks on just 28 minutes a game, bro. He's on a minutes restriction right now. Last 10 games, he's only played 25 minutes. He's still putting up 25, 10, and 3.1 blocks, bro. Imagine if he was consistently able to get 
33, 34 yeah. minutes a night. Insane. He might genuinely one season average five plus blocks a year. I listen. That's it's definitely doable. You can easily see it based off of how many minutes he's playing now. And it's like, yeah, it's it's definitely doable. I I like obviously you know this year is kind of just you know what get your feet wet. First of all, see what we got team wise as far as who could actually be on this team, and then just we're not really looking for nothing. But when they actually get some more solid pieces and be a solid team. It's going to be so fun to watch them actually try to win <laughs> and actually, like, try to be a good team. It's going to be super fun. And then once he gets off the minute restriction. Bro, when they get a competent roster around him, th- the sky is the limit. It's going – we're going to really be watching some of the most ridiculous basketball we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Like, I-, I can't even fathom what it's going to look like for him to have consistent, competent guard play around him. I can't wait. It's going to be ridiculous. Um, live reaction, because this actually just got tweeted by Shams 52 seconds ago. All-star starters are out. The East starting lineup, Giannis is the captain. The other forwards are Jason Tatum and Joel Embiid. Like we predicted, the they starting guards, Tyrese hmm. Halliburton and Damian Lillard. Lillard over Brunson? Uh, let me uh, in that me fan. It's fan voted though, right? Ah, uh, I don't remember how the starters worked. So I swear the start wasn't the starters fan voted, and then everything else is filled out by like whoever I forgot who. But fans it, account for fifty percent of the All Star starters vote. Media and players make up twenty five percent. Knicks fans ain't go hard enough for Brunson, man. That's crazy. I had Lillard as. My guard coming off the bench, I had Donovan Mitchell. Is the only difference I had in my lineup. Um, Let me see. And oh, honestly, I did have. Oh, I did have Mitchell too. Yeah, and honestly, again, like between Lillard and Brunson, like that way they both was right there. Like Lillard could easily have been in the wild card slot. Like I just, that's just how I typed it in. So, oh like, yeah, there's yeah, not yeah. really any difference there. We had the same stars. I forgot. It was right. all. Oh, it was Donovan Mitchell who it was. I had. Oh, I had Brunson as my. Yeah, yeah. I had Brunson yeah. as like my. Uh, all, uh, he was the off the bench guard, and Lillard was like the alternate. But like yeah. I said, it, it didn't really matter. But still, I honestly, way, was, I viewed it as like Tyrese and Donovan Mitchell, and then if it wasn't one of them two, then it would should have been Maxi before I would have put mm-hmm. Lillard up there. I honestly, like I said, Brunson Lillard. I think they're both all stars. I think Brunson again had as good of a case as. Um, any of them to even consider to be a starter. So, yeah, interesting, 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 interesting. I wonder, I'm trying to refresh and see if he's gonna, he gonna the drop West, the West. Right? Yeah, you just gonna leave us hanging. He gotta let it, he gotta let it simmer a little bit. Let y'all get y'all tweets off. <laughs> I'm looking at the top reply, it just said Jalen Brunson seeing the all star starters. It's, it's Isaiah Thompson talking about some. I met the criteria. <laughs> uh, what's we'll shoot. But while, while we wait for Shams to drop the west side of it, um, we're going to go ahead, since it's conference championship weekend, and do some conference championship-related NFL trivia. So I have got four different lists for you, all related to well, the first year, individual stats. The last one is team stats, only in conference championship games. I'm terrified. <laughs> I, I I went through and I put them. I think again in order from what is the easiest to the hardest. So we're gonna we're gonna start with the easiest. So I need you to name. Or actually, let me let me get set. Make sure I get it right for the the TikTok. I need you to name the top five passing yard performances in conference championship history. Performances, most yards thrown. So I got to name a player that threw for the most yards. In- yes, and I'll, I'll let you know two of these. Are, so it's there's six players in total. Mm-hmm. Two of them are the same player, so I'm just going to lump them together. So there's five players that you have to name. All right, so Mahomes. Mahomes is not on the list. Brady. Brady is the sixth guy, sixth f- best performance, but he's the fifth guy. Uh, okay. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me pay Manning. Hey, Manning is number two, 400 yards against New England. 
uh, when he was with Denver. I was about to say, I knew that was a Denver year. So, mm-hmm. and this is of history. This is like no cutoff year. All time. Joe Montana. Joe Montana is not up here. John Elway. John Elway is the fifth most yards. Um, so he'd be the, the fourth guy here. Two for 385 against Cleveland in 1990. So you're missing the first spot and the three and four spot are both the same person. Okay. Okay. Dan Marino. Dan Marino is number one. Threw for 421 yards on 21 completed passes against Pittsburgh. That's nuts. I ain't gonna lie. That's insane. Nuts. That's, a crazy <laughs> That's, nuts. <stat> line. <laughs> That's nuts. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm assuming this is like a legend quarterback. Some might say. <laughs> Some might say. <laughs> I feel like he's a cowboy or something. Troy Aikman. No, no, not, <laughs> not, not a cowboy. <laughs> It depends on depends on what you what's your criteria of a legend. I don't know, it's, you know. Ben Roethlisberger, not Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, I AFC or NFC because this is my football memory is terrible. NFC, NFC, NFC. for both performances. Drew Brees, not Drew Brees. Hmm. You gonna laugh when you hear it now? That's that was funny. Oh my god, is he? Is he not an active player? Not an active player. He is retired. Recent retire, if that helps. Well, actually, I don't know if he's retired. He ain't in the lead. Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan. <laughs> there you go. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Legend. Right, was, eh, he's up, yeah. there, up there in total passing yards. I don't yeah, know. He's, he's like, yeah, maybe he, he won that Super Bowl. Fame, probably. Yeah. Maybe he didn't choke and won that Super Bowl. Uh, but yeah, threw for 396 <laughs> yards against San Francisco in 2013 and threw for 392 against Green Bay. Before they blew a twenty-eight to three lead against the Patriots, that's terrible. It is disgusting. I will never forgive him for that, bro. That was yeah. <laughs> With that though, Shams finally dropped or Shams finally dropped the West All Star starters. Obviously, LeBron is the captain. Uh, I think this was all cut and dry. Luca and Shea as the guards, KD and Jokic as the other two forwards. I think that was was our. Exact list, except you had AD. AD snubbed? Yeah. <laughs> AD snubbed? What is this? He deserved it way more than KD. No, let me stop. This is how this what it should be. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Which is crazy because, like, going into the year, don't, when don't you feel like uh, – I think I was listening to – almost said through the wire, numbers on the board, talk about <laughs> it. Um, And they were like, going into the season, you would feel like it was going to be Luca and Steph every year. That was going to be a lot. Starters in the All-Star game if they're healthy. Mm-hmm. Shay was like, Mm-mm. clear cut. Don't they even talk, got an argument for Steph over They him. talk about him for his post game, not his post game. Mm. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, going back to the trivia. Next one. Same thing. So there's going to be six guys here, but I need you to name the top five highest receiving yard games in conference championship history. Larry Fitzgerald. Not Larry Fitzgerald. Jerry Rice. Not Jerry Rice either. Marvin Harrison. Not Marvin Harrison either. Bruh, what are we doing here? Oh, my God. What are we talking about? All right, bet, 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 bet. Let me lock in. Let me lock in. Let me lock in. Receiving yards in, in, in conference championship history. It, it, it might help to think about who you just named for the passing one and then double back because at least – Three of these performances are in the same game as I got you. just in the passing one. Julio Jones. Julio Jones is number three and four. 182 against San Francisco and 180 against Green Bay. Two touchdowns in both games. Prime Julio was different. Prime Julio was a dog. Randy Moss. Not Randy Moss. That Brady, that Brady game was 2017 against Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, he was. Oh, all yeah, right. Uh... Why am I blanking? Why am I blanking? DT, Broncos, receiver. No. Okay, never mind. I was thinking of the Peyton Manning, the Peyton Manning mm-hmm. one. Um, the, other, the other game is the Brady game. So you're missing the, a Patriots receiver from 2017. Julian Edelman? Not Julian Edelman. I'm Amendola? Not Amendola. Yeah, what, you know, not that, not the, the white dude. What's his name? <laughs> it, it is the Hogan? white dude. Chris Hogan. Hogan. <laughs> 
Yo, bro, Chris that, Hogan, that, that, 180 that yards, two touchdowns. Bro, that dude was like, when people say like, yo, Brady could take anybody and make him nice, they picture that guy. Like, that's the the the, the guy they use as that example, bro. Chris, isn't it Chris Hogan? That's the name. Chris Hogan. I think he's a, I'm pretty sure he plays professional lacrosse now, right? If I'm not mistaken. Or he did play lacrosse and could have went lacrosse. Let me see really quick. Chris Hogan. What a guy. Yeah, lacrosse career. Yeah, February 2021. He declared for the Premier Lacrosse League. Went what undrafted. Guy. So I got I got Julio and I got, I got Chris Hogan. Those are my two. Yeah, so you currently currently have uh number three, four, and five. Three and four are both Julio. So you're missing the first, second, and then sixth performance. Um and one of these guys you're not gonna get. Low key, I've never heard this name before in my life. <laughs> if okay. you would have got it out of my yo, yo, I got the stats pulled up right here in my other monitor. Um, all right, let me think, let me think, let me think. And the, the thing with this, I gotta think of a winner, somebody who gets to that point. I can't just say name top receivers. Low key, Antonio Brown. Not Antonio Brown. Mm. Is there anyone that retired recently? Anyone that retired recently? No. There okay. is two inactives, both retired a long time ago, one super long ago, and one still active. Oh, somebody still active? Mm hmm Travis Kelsey? Not Travis Kelsey. Tyreek Hill? Tyreek Hill, uh, 172 yards against Buffalo. What number was that? I'm curious. That's that's the sixth highest. Okay, cool, 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 cool. cool. Yeah. Okay. So now okay. you're just missing the top two. <clears throat> okay. Top two. Mm -hmm. Terrell Owens. Not Terrell Owens. Hmm. This is tough. I already said mm -hmm. Jerry Rice and he wasn't up here, right? Didn't you say that? Yeah, no, he's not up here. But that's the that's the line of thinking. Iconic receivers, or at least one of them. It's not Ocho. It's not it's, Ocho Cinco. I don't even think he made play? it that far. I was going to say, did he even play in the conference championship game? I don't even think bro made it that far. Mm. Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin is number one, 192 a, oh. yards, two touchdowns against San Francisco in 95. All right, if you say I'm not gonna get this last dude, yeah, is, was it black? Is black and white, bro? He don't even got a. a it's just a silhouette. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, 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 Leon Sandcastle. <laughs> <laughs> it is Cliff Branch. Uh, Lost me. Yeah, went for 186 and one touchdown against Pittsburgh in 1974. Why are we always getting fried? What's the what's the word? Why is it always no, I Pittsburgh? Need, I need to tighten up. Isn't this that's the steel curtain era, right? Seventies. Our, second, our secondary been sweet my whole my whole existence. God, hey, why are we getting Swiss cheese by everybody? What's going on? I don't know, bro. I need to tighten down. I guess so. Joey Porter coming in though. We locking that up. Okay, okay, okay. We stepping it up in difficulty a little bit. Oh God! I need you to name the top five. Actually, I didn't. I'm gonna phrase this question. I think I've been phrasing them weird. I need you to name the top five biggest rushing performances in conference championship history. Most yards in a game. Okay, I don't know the exact game, so I'm just gonna. Raheem Mostert. Raheem Moser is number one, 220 yards, four touchdowns. Bro. I remember that one. I knew that one. I, I, mm -hmm. I knew that one. Uh, okay, okay. Now we talking. Now we talking. Now I got to think of people who made it. Marshawn Lynch. Not Mar I think Marshawn Lynch was sixth on this oh, list. That's annoying. Yeah. Um, rushing performances. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is tough. This is so hard. I can't think of like running backs that like running backs do, do not equal like Super Bowls in winning. So it's like it's hard to. Uh. You do have there's one more person this century, and then everything else is in the nineties. My headphones just died. <laughs> okay. I'm 
They only yeah. did for maybe that far. Ladarian Thomason? Not LT. One one early 2000s, 290s, 180s, who I also don't know this 80s player. So you might not get this one. Mm, early 2000s. Let's show them all, all legendary running backs, though. Okay. Okay. Bad, bad, bad. It's not Adrian Peterson. They never made it that far, I don't think. And say you got to think, you got to try to think teams that was were getting to the Super Bowl. That's what I'm saying. It's Emmitt Smith. Not Emmitt Smith. But you, you lost you, me. You, you on the right line of thinking. You on the right line of thinking. <laughs> Yo, oh, this is tough. I bet. See, they never won. I can't even say, bro. Um, Walter Payton. Not Walter Payton. What's his face? Eric Dickerson. Not Eric Dickerson. Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk is the last one. Number five, 2002. Okay. Ran for 159 and two touchdowns against the Eagles. So what I got left? How many? What I got left? Three left, two 90s, one 80s. All right, we can forget about the, the 80s, dude. Yeah, the 80s <laughs> one is cooked. I, I the 80s one is Wilbert Montgomery. Ran for 194 yards against Dallas. Lost me. All right, the last two is AFC or NFC? One AFC, one NFC. Oh, thanks. Great. <laughs> that helps. And this is 90s? 90s. One is 94, one is 99. My, my history is bad with football. And they're legendary running backs? Both legendary running backs. It's going to kill me to not, not get this one. I might be lost, bro. I don't know. I think I'm. I don't think I got this one. Tough pain. Third, I, I got this one. The third was 186 yards and three touchdowns against Kansas City in 1994. Thurman Thomas. I was gonna get and that. And then in 1999, he ran for 167 yards and a touchdown. TD Terrell Davis. I should have got that one. That was one. That one should have got. I don't think I would have got the other one, but I, I should got TD. Damn, that's tough. It's tough. So last one's a little different. Oh man. There's six teams here. <laughs> Three teams here are tied for third place. So I just lumped them all in. So I need you to name the six teams with the most interceptions all time in conference championship games. Interceptions like they got the pick, not throwing picks. Patriots. The Patriots. Are not oh I'm tripping. They're number two. I was, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. They're number two. 15. Uh, or Seahawks. wait, no, 21 pick. I'm tripping. 21 picks. Seahawks. Okay. Seahawks not on the list. Those Dallas Cowboys them years. Cowboys are number one. They have 25 picks in 14 NFC championship games. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um Broncos. Broncos are fourth. They have 16 picks. They're well, actually, they're tied for fourth. There's three teams tied for fourth. Hmm. I said I have Patriots, Seahawks. No, no. Do I have Seahawks? Did I say that? No. You've got Cowboys, Patriots, and Broncos so far. Hmm. Ravens. Not the Ravens. Steelers? Steelers are third, 20 yeah. picks all the time. Steel curtain, baby. Let's go. Lock up. Um, hmm. See, I don't want to just name teams because I feel like that's kind of cheating. I'm trying to actually think. Because I could just be like, <laughs> Bengals, Browns, Steelers. Like, right. I, you know, <laughs> I, just, I always want to list off teams. Um, why, am I, why is my mind blanking right now? Okay, I got to think of teams that won that had good defenses. Saints? Not the Saints. Uh, not them. Not them. 49ers? Not the 49ers. It's not the Rams? It's not the Rams. Not the Rams. Damn. Okay. I bet, 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 bet. We slacking. We slacking right now. We doing bad. We doing bad. Oh, I'm blanking. Let me see. 
none of them teams. None of them. I might be tugged, bro. I don't even know. And it's how many? I right, what was narrow teams? Two AFC teams. Oh, both in the AFC. Both in the AFC. I already said them. I already said them. It's not like it's not the Chiefs. It's not, not the, the Chiefs. Chiefs. Who had good defenses? Am I bugging? Am I bugging? I Who had good defenses? One of, them, one of these teams is up here. With only seven appearances, every other team on this list has double digit appearances, so they must have been out here. I ski all the time. <laughs> I they, ski. They chances. The Bills, not the Bills, bro. What are we talking about here, bro? No, nah, they was only all the time. The Jets, it's not the Jets, bro. I think I'm lost because I right, at this point I'm just be naming teams, so I think I lost it. The last two teams were the Dolphins and the Raiders. I was going to say the Dolphins, but I was like, I don't even remember there. them being being there. And the Raiders? That Was that team with seven appearances or no? No, the Dolphins had seven. Raiders got 11. When was the Dolphins? That, what, that Dan Marino? I would guess. Let me see. Um, Yeah, he played in seven, 83, 80. Yeah, it looks like, dang, it all look like Dan Marino. Uh, not the, first two. the first two were Don Shula. Okay. Um, so one of them was the perfect season. Actually, first three. 72. What the heck? <laughs> they played two AFC championship games in the same year. What? I guess they switched the schedule around, and so they played one January 2nd, and they played another one Chris, uh, New Year's Eve the same year. Tweaked. What, what are we talking so about? Two and seventy-two, one and seventy-three, and then one, two, three, four with Dan Marino. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Those is on my list of teams where I'd have just been rattling off names. <laughs> it wasn't gonna be no educated guesses behind it. I just went by division and just started naming names. Yeah. Um, also, just came out uh, Brunson. It looks like won the media vote to be an all-star or he finished second in media voting for starters. So he would have been a starter, but he didn't get the starting spot because he was so far behind in the fan voting. Knicks fans. Did you bad gang? That's tough. That's foul. Actually. I'm not, fans I'm, do not, you bad? I'm, I'm not a guy to get into snubs. We did a whole segment a while ago on snub culture being a little bit out, a little bit out of control. Mm. It's no way Damian Lillard should be a starter. Nah, not out of all. Like, pick uh, pick a name out of a hat out of everyone else that was a, that was there as far as guards. He, he should have been the one. That's tough. Yeah, that's that's fan. But that's like strictly name. You know, popularity a little bit because you gotta think about it. As far as like fan popularity, Damian Lillard versus Brunson and Maxi and right. you know what I mean. Like it's just yeah. There's probably people who didn't even watch like. It was like, oh, damn on the Bucks. Didn't even really watch that much. It was just like, Damian Lillard, Maxi, give me Damian Lillard, duh. Like, they're not actually like watching it and seeing it. Also, I don't know if you've seen the clip. It's the first time I, I've seen it. I guess Rachel Nichols got a podcast with Demarcus Cousins now, which is a random, random pairing. But she was talking about how she's not a huge fan of the 65 games rule to get, you know, any of the end of season accolades. DeMarcus Cousins says, I blame the analytics. I think analytics are effing the game up. I don't want to offend anybody, but we got to remove the nerds from the game. Games played? (laughs) That's an analytic, bro. (laughs) What they got to do with analytics, bro? (laughs) What? What? We got to remove the nerds from the game that tell me I got to. What? What Huh? That don't even make sense. Makes zero sense. Maybe he's blaming like analytics caused load management, which then caused the cap. Like I don't, I don't know what he was getting at. I, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because yeah, I, I I can see where that was trying to go, but in a clip by itself that y'all posted, that don't that don't look like how it came off, bro. Crazy. Side note, side note. I have this the 76ers game was on on my other monitor. That little midi pull up 
uh, shot from Joel Embiid, just hit three of them in a row. In a row, I don't think I've ever seen him miss that shot ever in my life, bro. He don't miss that shot. It's insane. It's never not free money, bro. That and also seeing Shea in person, bro, you let him get within 12 feet of the basket, cash. Every, every single time. Every single time. <laughs> He's not missing. Every single time. I need to go to a game. Definitely, definitely got to. Um, but with that, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Um, like we mentioned, we're going to begin the playback setup soon, so be on the lookout for that. Um, definitely tap into some of our streams. Come join the playback. Come hang out, watch some hoops with us. Um, as always, if you made it through the whole episode, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Make sure you get all of our noties. Go over to the audio platforms. Hit a five-star review. Pre-download the show. Follow us on the socials. You know the drill. As always, I'm Billy. That's Dame. And we out. Peace. Yes, sir.